Hi, I'm Paul McGuire. On today's program, I want to talk about a very important truth, and that is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we discussed on an earlier edition of the Paul McGuire Report, Jesus Christ is the only spiritual teacher, guru, or head of any religious system in human history of all the enlightened teachers and masters, etc., etc., it is only Jesus Christ among all men or women who died and resurrected from the dead. That makes the life of Jesus Christ completely unique in contrast with every other person that's ever lived. And that makes his message completely unique. You see, the Bible is completely different than all the other spiritual books that have been written in human history. And the reason the Bible is completely different from Genesis to Revelation is because the Bible is a book where we read about a steady occurrence of what are called supernatural interventions by the infinite personal living God of the universe. And this supernatural intervention into our ordinary reality these interventions are called miracles. And so the Bible is a chronological and historically accurate record. It's, it's not a mythology. You know, some of the books that are written are just so absurd and really intellectually pathetic. I think of Joseph Campbell's entire series, which is really a pathetic exercise in attempted intellectualism. It's so faulty, I don't even understand how people can take it seriously. His whole idea that, that we have created, for example, the Bible, Jesus Christ and his resurrection, that man created these mythologies for man's comfort. You know, that, that's, that's ludicrous. And, and quite frankly, you'd have to be an idiot to believe that. The same with uh, Eric Fromm. Uh, a, a protege of the Frankfurt School, which was a bunch of Marxist professors in the 1920s uh, that uh, were in uh, Germany in the 1920s. They're the ones that invented political correctness, by the way. But Eric Fromm, a disciple of the, uh, the, the Frankfurt School, wrote a book that I read when I was a teenager called The Art of Loving. And essentially what he said in The Art of Loving, because he was a humanist, he didn't believe in God, was that it was man that invented God. God, didn't, God did not create man. Man invented God because man was scared and frightened in, in, you know, out in the wilderness, in the night sky, all by himself. He could barely light a fire. And as the terrified human beings huddled together, uh, shivering with fear, they, they be began to make up these fables to comfort themselves with. And as time went by, one of these fables or mythologies was the fable and mythology of Jesus Christ and the Bible. Well, you know, Eric Fromm, I don't know if he's alive. I think he's, I don't think he's with us anymore. But really, what a tragic analysis of human history. Because if you simply look at the evidence of design in creation, whether we're talking about the creation of a human being or the creation of the entire ecosystem, or the creation of the mathematical formulas that govern our universe, or the creation of the laws of physics 
and biology, everything from quantum mechanics to multiple dimensions to scalar technology, so on and so forth, it is obvious that even the dumbest among us could arrive at the conclusion that the complexity, the, the highly sophisticated organiza organization uh, of, upon which our entire ecosystem, our entire planet, as Buckminster Fuller coined it, Spaceship Earth. I mean, Spaceship Earth is a, if you look at it from, from the perspective of engineering, because Fuller, Buckminster Fuller, of course, was a, an engineer and a scientist, it's, it's a marvelously complex machine. None of this came about because mankind told each other a bunch of fables as they were huddling together in fear in a cave in a desert somewhere, you know, thousands and thousands of years ago. And none of this came about through accidental random chance over 500 million years. These, the, both of those perceptions are incredibly flawed. The, res the Bible introduces us to the Creator, capital C, who is God, the infinite personal living God of the universe, who, by the way, when we define God, we need to define God and His Word, which is truth, as final reality. Final reality means that it, it is the, the biblical view of reality is final reality. In other words, it is not just uh, uh, an arbitrary consensus about what reality is. It is the reality behind man-made consensuses. And then Dr. Francis Shaver used a term called true truth. So, for example, the resurrection, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ would be true truth. True truth in the sense that the resurrection of Christ is a historical fact. It didn't happen because I needed it to happen to console myself of psychological fears. Or the resurrection of Jesus Christ didn't happen because Christians or Jews are weak-minded, uh, uh, fragile individuals whose sanity may collapse if we don't invent a mythology of a resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is true truth in that it is true apart from whether or not uh, some pseudo-intellectual chooses to believe in it. It happened in, his in history, and Christ is returning. Now, the reason we know that is there are hundreds and hundreds and thousands of prophecies in the Bible, unlike any other book, which were predicted in advance and came true exactly as they were predicted. So, there are archaeological records, for example, of, uh, Rome, of uh, Egyptian chariots where the Red Sea parted during the Exodus and Moses led the children of Israel uh, through the Red Sea as God supernaturally uh, parted the waters of the Red Sea. Archaeologists using scuba diving equipment have uh, gone down to the base of the Red Sea and discovered multiple, vast numbers of chariots and skeletons and bones and Egyptian armor and helmets and stuff. So you have archaeological proof constantly.
Now, Christ resurrected from the dead. How does this happen? Because it's not normal, obvious, obviously. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a historical and real and verifiable demonstration of the supernatural reality and the supernatural power of an almighty God who is not confined to the normal restrictions that the laws of physics uh, uh, have a hold on our life and society and ordinary men or women. God can because he's the infinite personal living God of the universe and nothing is impossible with God, can exert power whenever and wherever he chooses to. So before mankind began, before time began, because you see, God lives in a multidimensional universe. God created a multidimensional universe long before quantum physics and string theory discovered the reality of a multidimensional universe. God created a multidimensional universe. God lives in the kingdom of heaven, which is beyond the dimensions of space and time. It's in a different dimension. And in that different dimension, just like scalar technology operates, Tesla's scalar technology operates in a different dimension. That's why you can pull through te a Tesla's scalar technology, you can pull an infinite amount of energy out of another dimension. And you could fuel the entire planet. The only reason it isn't happening is because the greed and monopolies of the, the gasoline fuel-based uh, economies, because you can pull an infinite amount of energy from another dimension. That was proven by Tesla and scalar technology. So, in the same way, God can choose to resurrect, release his supernatural force, take a dead body, resurrected it from the dead, and then at a particular moment in time, after he resurrected Christ from the dead in front of all these witnesses, they put him in a tomb surrounded by Roman guards who were heavy-duty Roman guards, the, the equivalent of special ops in our military today. So these special ops Roman guards were guarding the tomb. A giant stone, tombstone, um, a stone was put to, to guard the entrance to the tomb so, so none of the disciples could sneak away with his body. And so when they opened, the, when they moved the stone, they, they saw that Christ and his body were gone. There was just a burial cloth and there were two angels inside the tomb. Christ was gone. There was no human way he could have escaped. He resurrected from the dead and then he literally walked through walls as he chose to because he had a different kind of body, a supernatural body. And he, that supernatural body was no longer confined to the limitations of a, a physical dimension body would have, a physical dimension biological body. So then Christ uh, performs miracles. He sees doubting Thomas. Thomas puts his finger where the wound was. Uh, he walks through walls when he's visiting the disciples. And then finally, he's teaching his disciples about Bible prophecy with Herod's temple behind him. And Christ ascends into heaven. And as Christ is ascending into heaven, there are two angels. And the disciples are kind of freaked out. And the two angels say to the disciples, This same Christ who you see ascending into heaven now will return in the same manner. In other words, Christ who's ascending into the heavens now, at some point in the future, the latter days, the last part of the, of the last days, will return the exact same way he came. Um, excuse me, the exact same way he left. He ascended into heaven, and so he's going to return from heaven, and so he will descend from heaven, and he will be the Lord of planet Earth, and he will establish uh, rulership over planet Earth on Earth's new capital, Jerusalem, for a, a literal 1,000-year millennial reign. And then he'll bring in the new heaven, the new Earth, and the new Jerusalem. And the old Earth and the old heavens will be burnt up because they're defiled, they're polluted, they're corrupted. So the resurrection 
is the power of God to take a dead body and bring it back to life. This is God's uh, love message to each one of us. It, it should birth hope. It's not a fantasy, fable, mythology. Um, it should bring hope to every person who believes in the saving message of Jesus Christ because all you have to do to receive eternal salvation is place your faith in Christ and believe in um, eternal salvation by faith, not of works. You simply believe in the free gift of salvation and you receive it. God is loving. God doesn't want anyone to perish. So these people who cop about out and say, how can a loving God send people to hell? God doesn't send people to hell. They send themselves to hell because they were given free choice. So every one of us knows that we're degrading biologically the longer that we live. No matter what kind of antioxidants we take, no matter what kind of uh, advanced technologies regarding health may be available in the future, uh, genetic engineering or whatever, sooner or later, every one of us will die in these physical bodies unless we live in that generation which is alive at the time of the return of the Lord. So every one of us dies. And that's a very despairing and depressing thought. People like Joseph Campbell and Eric Fromm, they have absolutely no answer for that reality, the reality of death. And despite their pomposity in, in, in uh, looking down in, in a false uh, uh, condescension on those who believe in the living God, they have no answer for death. And I would suggest to you in the privacy of their final moments, unless they received Christ and repented of their sins, I would suggest to you, like many other bold uh, existentialists like Nietzsche, who died in terror and fear as he was going out. He wasn't the bold Superman that he claimed to be. He died in fear. And some say he cried out to Jesus Christ to be his Lord and Savior. That I don't know. So I would suggest to you that probably secretly, Eric Fromm, author of Art of Loving, and Joseph Campbell in his books on mythology, died as frightened men because they realized that they erected an idolatrous intellectual system in which it says there is no God and basically ignored the reality of the resurrection. Now, God resurrected Christ to show us that for us, death does not have to be the end. So that when we die, and we will all die, if we've put our faith in Jesus Christ, Christ promises to resurrect us from the dead. And that's why the Bible describes death as like falling asleep. So if we fall asleep in Jesus, which means falling asleep believing in Jesus as Lord, a nanosecond will pass and we'll be in the presence of the Lord in an entirely different dimension in heaven living in our brand new glorified bodies. That's why the scripture says, death, where is th thou sting? See, death is an enemy that's defeated. And that's the purpose of God resurrecting Christ. It was twofold. Christ came to pay the penalty for our sins by dying for our sins upon the cross. But then secondly, Christ resurrects from the dead, showing us that when we put our faith in the free gift of salvation in Jesus Christ, we too will participate with Jesus Christ, resurrecting from the dead and entering eternity or paradise with our brand new glorified bodies for all eternity. That's wonderful. What else can I say? That's the resurrection. I'm Paul McGuire. Visit paulmcguire.us. <music>